One place where none of this banking drama is taking place is Canada. And that is the focus of tonight's Weekend Journal. I'm Ed Clark. Ed Clark is a plain-spoken Canadian you? bank CEO with a few simple rules. We should never do things for our customers and clients that we don't actually understand. If you wouldn't put your mother-in-law in this, don't put our clients in it. You may never have but heard think, of Clark think... or Toronto Dominion Bank, but it's the sixth largest bank in North America and in the middle of a global banking crisis, a profitable one at that. We will make more money in this quarter than any bank in North America. So for a little Canadian bank sitting up here, that's, yeah, that feels pretty good. How does that happen? Uh, basically because we didn't do the things that blew other banks up. Neither did his Canadian colleagues. Last quarter, 2008, all Canada's major banks were profitable, making two and a half billion. Around the same time, U.S. banks lost more than 26 billion. In fact, since the financial crisis began, American taxpayers have provided more than $300 billion to help bail out more than 450 companies. During that period of time, from their government, Canadian banks have not taken one penny. One reason? Take those infamous subprime mortgages given to risky home buyers. They crippled banks in the U.S., where it peaked 25% of loans were subprime. In Canada, only 3%. Our U.S. subsidiaries did not do any subprime lending, nothing, zero. Another villain in the financial crisis were those toxic mortgage-backed securities. So I'm going to give you an amortized five-year. Risky loans that were chopped up and resold in countless different ways. Many banks gobbled up the now virtually worthless investments. But Ed Clark got out four years ago. As soon as you see that complexity, you say, I, you know, how can I possibly think I actually can guess whether this will work or not? And as soon as I hear that, I say, get out of it. It didn't take long for me to discover that this is an entirely different culture. Sherry Cooper spent years at the Fed overseeing Wall Street before moving to Bay Street, the Canadian equivalent. The Canadian banks were up to their ankles in the toxic muck, whereas American banks were over their heads. And so a lot of this is about saying, here are old banking rules, and we are prepared to give up short-term profit in order to make sure that we have a balance sheet that doesn't blow up on us. Canada is the only industrialized nation in the world without a single bank failure in the current economic downturn.